anytime you're dreaming about something, you definitely have a passion about it. And I would say, um, well, as a Christian, I would always pray about it first, and I would ask God to definitely guide me. Um, the next thing I think I would say is um, try to surround yourself with people who, uh, who have gifts that you don't. Uh, like, for instance, administration is not my gift. Um, I'm, I'm a performer. I'm an actor. I'm a singer. I'm that onstage person. Um, and so I really try to surround myself with people who have the gift of communication, um, uh, helping to put teams together, um, and just to start to network with people, like make a list of things that you know you're going to need. Um, and how do you, how do you uh, surround yourself and pick the right people to help your dream become a reality? Recognize and understand um, the things that you can't do or you're not as good at and find someone to put on your team to do those things. Because then that's, that's where you can really take a dream and make it a reality. And understanding that it takes, it's a team effort, right? Not one person can totally do it. It's kind of a funny story. Um, so Karen Vale, who used to be a member here at Our Savior, um, she, she and her husband were good friends of my wife and I, and um, our sons were, were friends. And they used to invite us over to their parents' pool uh, for like a 4th of July party every year. And I knew that they had done a lot of um, uh, drama and theater and stuff in college and, and after college in community theater. And I had done some, some college theater um, and it always just thought, you know, it would be so neat to be able to um, mirror the experience that I had in college theater, not just of being on stage, that's great, but more, more than that, um, creating an environment where people who love the same art form can come together and spend time. Uh, because I know that the relationships that you build during those 12, 13, 14, however many weeks it is, um, are lasting. You become family. And so we were thinking about that. We were in the pool one day at the 4th of July barbecue at her parents' house and we we're just kind of swimming around and we, and we were talking about shows that we had done. And, and, uh, and she looked at me and she said, we should do a show at church. And I was like, yeah, that would be cool. That would be so great. But that would never happen. Like who would come try out? Who would like, who would buy tickets to that? Nobody would do that. You know, well, yeah, well, we should do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Maybe someday. And uh, we, we always thought that we always had these excuses about why we, we, we could never do it. We didn't have theatrical lighting. We didn't have a, 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 a big stage with, a, you know, a, a, a dressing rooms or, you know, a backstage or the, you know, the, all the stuff that comes that you see in regular theaters. We didn't have any of that. And we thought, you know, there's no way, there's no way. And so for about two and a half years, we talked about that. And, um, and then suddenly... Um, we had a fire here at our Savior Lutheran Church in 2016. And um, the result of the other side of that fire was that uh, people just kept giving and giving and giving. And they asked us, what do you guys want to do? Like, what is your dream for this space at our Savior Lutheran Church? And my tech director, Matt Keyes, and I had talked a lot about doing what's called environmental projection. And what that is, is, is projecting one singular image through multiple um, video projectors onto a, a wall or a space. So instead of having a screen that has one picture and your words, you would actually have, you know, a four, five, six, or even sometimes seven um, seven different blank canvases. And, and so people made that happen. God made that happen. Um, we got brand new theatrical lighting. We, um, we got, we replaced all of our, uh, halogen 500 watt bulbs with led lights that could change color and match whatever is on the screen. And we were able to, uh, just really create a, a space that is transformative, um, where, you know, if you wanted something, uh, you know, all green or all red or multiple different, you know, multiple colors, you could transform the space. And all of a sudden, the excuses of why we couldn't do something, we, we had no more excuses. And, and we just felt God tapping us on the shoulder saying, this is something I want you to do. So one of my favorite movies of all time is uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, right? And this is the one with Sean Connery where Sean Connery plays his dad. And there's a part of the movie toward the end where he gets shot. 
And um, to save his dad, Indiana Jones has to do all these, t these trials and tests and booby traps and stuff to be able to get the cup of Christ. Well, one of them is uh, he's standing on a huge ledge and it looks like it's impossible for him to get to the other side. And yet he has to take what he calls a leap of faith. And so what he does is he sticks his leg out and he just goes for it. And what happens? He sees the invisible pathway um, across. And, and, and this was kind of like that, that if we really felt like God was calling us to do this, um, we, just had to, we just had to go all in. I mean, we just had to, there was no, no halfway. It was either we had to do it all or not do it. And so that's what we did. We just pick, picked a show that was family friendly, uh, like The Music Man, and, um, and we just went for it and put out auditions. And uh, thankfully, Karn and Matthew, her husband Matthew, knew a lot of people in the um, theatrical community. And so we, we, we thought, man, who's going to come to this? You know, like nobody knows us. We're not a, you know, a theater company or anything. Um, and we had like 35 people show up uh, to audition. And, and part of that was uh, one of those was our director, Blake, uh, who's been in every show or helps, helped, has helped with every show since then. Um, and just was a, a, a wonderful, wonderful experience. My favorite thing about Mustard Seed is definitely, I mean, the relationships are huge. Um, that's why we do what we do, not only as a church, but as a theater company. And um, putting on a great show uh, is, is a bonus, um, and that, but that wasn't the reason why we started Mustard Seed. And I think um, compared to a lot of other um, community theater organizations, to me, it's a different baseline where we start from. It's a different um, purpose. Um, everybody wants to put on a great show. Nobody wants to be on stage and suck. You know, I mean, that's just no fun for everybody. Um, but if we can do it in a way where uh, we're bringing in a diverse group of people, um, loving them for who they are, accepting them for who they are, um, and putting them in places where they can succeed, and that's from that's from the prop master all the way up to the director himself or herself. Um, we want people to have success here. But more than that, we want people to develop long lasting relationships so that when the show is over, we're not done hanging out. Um, you know, we, uh, people from Mustard Seed get together during the, what we call the off season, because we only do one show a year, usually during the summer or spring. And, and uh, we've gone to Christmas parties to, uh, for, for each other, birthday parties. We've shown up and sang karaoke. Um, we've we've seen other shows together, you know, up at like the the, the Fifth Avenue or um, Tacoma Little Theater or whatever. And um, we celebrate each other, you know. Um, um, on social media, uh, we have some folks who have moved to New York and who are who are taking off their their film career and acting careers are taking off, and they started here, and um, and so that's awesome to to celebrate that. But um, but I love I love. The relationships first. The second thing is just watching from uh, watching the progression from when you know 30 or so people get together on that first day for the meet and greet, and we're getting we don't know names yet, and we're getting to know each other, to the very last show where um, people are sad because of, because this experience is over for them, and how much they've grown and how much they've matured not only as a theater company, but as people, you know, they've seen forgiveness, they've seen happiness. Um, when you're in a show, you're, it's mountain, mountain tops and deep valleys, um, especially during tech week, which if you've done tech week, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but, but through it all, you know, you, you really gain a brand new uh, appreciation of, of other people. And, um, and it's, it's, it's not like any other ministry I've been a part of. And, uh, and so, I'm just excited that, um, that God's just given us this opportunity and that we have so many great people that continue to make it happen year after year.